Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and in this video we are going to be talking about this. This is driftwood. How to prepare it, how to make it safe for your aquarium. Hope you enjoy it. Appreciate you being here. So this stuff is awesome. Driftwood is great. If you've been watching our channel for any length of time, you know that Joanna has done a lot of aquascapes using driftwood. As awesome as it can be and as cool as it can look in a fish tank, this stuff can cause a fish keeper a lot of pain by introducing disease into a tank and just making your tank look, well, not very good. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about how to prepare driftwood properly for your aquarium so that you can enjoy the aesthetics and not have to worry about your fish getting sick or your tank looking horrible. So when it comes to driftwood, there are many different types, many different sizes. And of course, the size and type that you pick is going to be based on your preferences and your setup. In today's video, we're going to talk about how we prepare small pieces of driftwood, something like this, as well as larger pieces of driftwood. That way you get an idea of what to do no matter what size or type of driftwood that you have. Now, before we get into preparing the driftwood, I'm really going to focus here on driftwood that you buy from an aquarium store, not necessarily something that you find just sitting out there on the ground somewhere, although the techniques that we're displaying here will also work if you find your driftwood. I just think for us, with the types of fish that we have, the risk of finding driftwood in nature and bring it in and potentially introducing disease. It's not worth the risk for us with the types of fish that we keep. But I also recognize that it can be a very cheap, i.e. free way to find driftwood for your aquarium. So first thing, let's take a look at the different sizes. You might have a piece like this. This is a relatively small piece. What we do with our smaller pieces of driftwood, the best thing that we can do. In all cases, we're going to go ahead and make sure that there are no dust or dirt or cobwebs or anything else just kind of hanging from the driftwood and so we're going to take a wire brush and go ahead and scrape it down a little bit. Now some driftwood will lend better to that than others so if you have something like Malaysian driftwood and you start really scrubbing it vigorously with a wire brush you're going to ruin the piece of driftwood but for the most part we're going to try to make sure that we wash off any just loose types of debris small pieces of wood that kind of thing. For a small piece of driftwood, the best thing you can do is boil it. Now, I highly recommend don't just take a pan and start boiling your driftwood away the same pans and pots that you use for cooking your food. I would probably have a dedicated pot for this task. That way you won't get in trouble if you have a significant other that uses those same pots for cooking food. So something like this is really simple. Get some water, boil it, Throw it in the pot. Now, this process for us usually means that we're gonna repeat it a few times. We'll leave the driftwood in the boiling water for about 15 to 20 minutes, and you're gonna see when that happens, a couple things are going to occur. The water is going to get brown. What's happening there is the tannins are leaching from the wood and into the water. That's especially important if you are someone who wants to add driftwood to your tank but doesn't want the tank to turn brown. Now that brown color is actually relatively healthy for your fish tank. In fact, we did a video on what to do about brown water and in that video I made a point that if it's due to driftwood, that's not a bad thing. I'll put that video in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description below if you want to check it out. I think it's a pretty good video that will help you understand that the tannins are actually a good thing. But if you don't want them in your tank, Boiling is going to help remove those tannins. The other thing that it's going to do is remove and destroy most of the microbes that are attached to your driftwood. So bacteria, fungi, algae, that kind of thing, a lot of that will be destroyed. Not necessarily anything that produces spores. A lot of times the spores will still survive that boiling process, but for the most part, disease-causing organisms are going to be destroyed through the boiling process. So we boil this wood for about 20 minutes, then I will dump off the water. It's probably gonna be brown and then I will boil it again. So we've done a few things. We've released the tannins, which will reduce the amount of brown water that you get in your aquarium after you add the driftwood. The second thing that that has done is it's allowed us to destroy a lot of the potentially disease causing microbes that might be attached to your driftwood. And the third thing, which is also important, is it helps allow the driftwood to sink when you add it to your aquarium. Almost all driftwood when you first add it will float if you don't cure it first, which means if you don't boil it or soak it, it's probably gonna float in your tank unless you weigh it down. So we've solved all three of those things by boiling. After we've boiled it, 
I will give it a quick rinse. And at that point, I'm pretty much ready to go. We could put the driftwood in our tank. Now, what happens as you get larger pieces of driftwood? Maybe they don't fit quite so nicely in the pot that you're trying to boil. Well, one, as long as you can get about half of it in your, in your pot, then I would boil one half. 20 minutes, dump the water, flip it over, boil the other half. That's what we would do with a piece something like this. And the larger the pot you have, obviously, the larger the piece of driftwood you're going to be able to boil. If boiling is not an option, if your piece is just too large, then get yourself something like maybe a 30 gallon tote. And if that will work, these things are really cheap. They're like eight to $10 at most home improvement stores. Go ahead, fill that up with hot water, put your piece of driftwood in there. Now, again, it's gonna serve the same purposes as a boiling, except the antimicrobial reduction. So you're gonna release the tannins, although it's going to take a lot longer. So if you're going to soak your wood in room temperature water, you may be soaking it for a number of days, maybe even a week or more. That's gonna do two things, release the tannins and cure the wood and allow it to sink once you add it to the fish tank. The issue we now have to deal with, and in my opinion, the most important issue is how do we reduce the number of microbes on that larger piece of wood if we are not able to boil it? And there you've got a couple of options. Option number one is to use hydrogen peroxide. This is my preferred method, H2O2, hydrogen peroxide. Most of us have a bottle of this stuff underneath our medicine cabinet. If you don't, it's relatively cheap and readily accessible. And for that, you might wanna have somewhere around a three to 5% solution in your tub or a five gallon bucket or whatever you're using. Now that I think about it, if you're going to be using a bathtub to do this, know that when those tannins leach out of the wood, it's going to stain your bathtub. Now, it, can you clean that stuff out? Usually, if your bathtub is a little bit older and a little bit more porous, that might be a little harder to do. So once again, just like the pots and pans, make sure that whoever you're with is okay with putting a piece of driftwood in a bathtub. That's why I use the, the totes, the 30 gallon totes. So we add that three to 5% hydrogen peroxide. We're gonna let that soak at least overnight in that solution. And then we'll go ahead and we will soak the driftwood in regular water. I don't dechlorinate the water for a very simple reason. The chlorine in the water can also serve as an antimicrobial. So I make no effort to dechlorinate the water when I'm soaking the driftwood. Once we've soaked that in hydrogen peroxide for about a day or two, then I'll go ahead and I will soak it in just regular non-dechlorinated water, let the tannins release and cure this thing so that it sinks. The other option that you have is you could use a bleach solution, somewhere around a 5% bleach solution. I don't do that and the reason why I don't do that is driftwood is porous. It's not like you're cleaning rocks or something that's not gonna absorb chemicals. If you use bleach, you're gonna to wanna to do the same process. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and soak it in the 5% bleach at least for a day and then get rid of the bleach solution, use non-dechlorinated water and soak it in that for about a week or so, making sure that you change out that water and get rid of that bleach. You don't want this thing smelling like bleach, but again, with the hydrogen peroxide, the advantage is when that breaks down, it breaks down into oxygen, gas, and water. When bleach breaks down, or if it doesn't break down, you can potentially have irritants for your fish. That's why I prefer the hydrogen peroxide. Now, a couple questions we get asked a lot when it comes to driftwood. One, is the driftwood going to alter my pH? I did an entire video about that. I'm gonna put it in the upper right-hand corner as well as in the description below. The answer is maybe. If you're worried about that, I definitely recommend checking out that video. The second question we get a lot is, hey, I put some driftwood in. I did everything I thought I was supposed to. I boiled it, I soaked it, I used the hydrogen peroxide, and there's a white film all over it. That's a very common thing and it happens to us quite frequently. That white film, usually the concern is, is it gonna be dangerous for the fish? In my experience, it hasn't been. The fish generally won't eat it. Uh, they leave it alone and what's gonna happen over time is you're gonna get this white film that's usually like a fungus or a bacterial, kind of like a, a, a bacterial coating. If that happens, you can just scrape that away with your hands or your fingers and then suck it up with a gravel vac. Usually it goes away within the first week or so, never to come back again. So if you're worried about that or if you see that happen, know that is a somewhat normal thing. All right, everyone, if you wanna learn more about how driftwood could potentially alter your water chemistry, check out this video in the upper right-hand corner. If you wanna learn a little bit more about brown water, which is caused by driftwood, check out this video in the lower right-hand corner. If you found this one useful, Share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.